Hi, everyone, and welcome to our newest mentor interview for the Technical Youth Career Outreach Project. My name is Chelsea, and I'm the Communications Manager for the Ontario First Nations Technical Services Corporation. And today we are going to be speaking with Emily Olette. And uh, Emily is actually one of our previous, uh, I believe it was the, was it the Student Award, Achievement, Achievement Award, or were you, yeah. Perfect. So she is a previous Student Achievement Award winner from OFNTSC, as well as our one of our new mentors for our Mentorship Youth Outreach Program. Um, and Emily studied architecture, and she's currently working as a full time as a drafts person for Design Group 547 in Windsor. Um, so Emily, welcome today. Uh, we're really excited to have you and to be able to chat with you a little bit more about um, kind of your career, how you got into it. Um, could you just maybe start out by just short, quickly introducing yourself and, and where you're from? So um, I'm Emily, like Chelsea introduced me. Um, so I live in Windsor um, and I'm a member of the Delaware Nation from Moravian of the Thames. Um, I'm 23 years old. I just graduated college this time last year. And yeah, I've been working for the past year full time in my field. Just it's a kind of starting position, getting my foot in the door, getting some experience. That's amazing. Um, I think one of my first questions, just based off of what you mentioned, um, cause you went to school for, was it the architecture technology program, right? At St. Clair college. Um, I'm yes. curious how, how easy was it for you to find work after you graduated? So I kind of knew someone who knew someone. So I was lucky to get this job, but there is, you know, most of my other classmates that I graduated with have found jobs by now. And like, I work in a very small office. I'm the only other em uh, employee. It's just me as the drafts person and the boss. But I know a couple of my friends like uh, are working in bigger, larger offices of like 10 to 20 people. Um, and I'm also started doing some side jobs on my own, just like small projects for people who have reached out to me. That's really exciting. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, what, what exactly can you tell us a little bit more about um, your program that you took at St. Clair College and what kind of class, what kind of your classes were like, what you learned, and then how you're applying that in your job? Um, so I, I really enjoyed the college experience um, because there's a lot of hands-on classes and you get a lot of practical experience like we had construction classes um, where we like actually physically built things and then there's a lot of computer classes where you learn the different like programs to use um, so the main program that you start learning in school is AutoCAD and that's what I use at my job now but we also learned to like Revit and a lot of other programs that, you know, you would use in other offices. Um, there's also, you know, some of the, um, like the, um, the building code classes and the theory classes. So we had construction theory where we learned you know, all the different aspects of, you know, building a structure. And then you also learn about different types of products, which comes in handy because there's so many different options. And that's something like I'm getting experience on now, like what products and what processes are actually being used like in my area and currently. Um, and yeah, the building code, like in school, obviously you become very familiar with that. And that's something I use every day, like referring back to it and interpreting it for the plans and projects I'm working on. That's amazing. I, you said you really enjoyed the college experience because it was hands-on. Is that something that you feel like prepared you really well for kind of what you're doing now in your, in your job? Or did you have to learn a lot like on, on the job as well? 
I think it did prepare me a lot like for my job and for going right into the field and working um and a lot of my teachers like they're you know very experienced and were able to share like their knowledge and what we would expect like getting a job right out of college so yeah it was really helpful in that aspect going back to I guess like maybe high school or even earlier how did you come across like architecture as a career and what was it that ultimately made you have the decision to go into that area? Um, I actually didn't consider this field for a career for a while. Um, I'm not sure if I just wasn't aware of it. Also, you know, the technical fields are um, pretty male dominated. So maybe that had something to do with just why I didn't consider it for a long time. But um, I've always been like a creative person. I really like art and I am really interested in woodworking. That was my favorite class in high school was wood shop. So that just led me to the construction field. And then I really like the design and planning part of, you know, doing small woodworking projects. So I just kind of wanted to keep learning and thought, you know it'd be pretty cool to design a whole house and that just got me interested in it through like my hobbies and you know just being creative and being into woodworking for sure that's really exciting so you mentioned like how you were you know interested in designing a whole house is that something that you're able to do now or is that something you kind of want to like you know like throughout your career like get to that point yeah, so right now I work under an architectural technologist and I am, now that I'm getting experience, I am able to like input my, you know, creativity and also um, design solutions. Like obviously there's a lot of problems that arise that you have to figure out. Um, so I'm definitely now been working for a year, like getting that experience and understanding and just learning more every day. That's amazing. And that's so exciting that you're able to have that opportunity right out of college. Um, I'm really happy that, that you have that. Um, I think going, going a little bit to the mentorship side of things, because this is kind of, you know, we're trying to promote our new mentorship program. Um, did you ever have somebody in that capacity, whether it was like a formal mentor relationship or just even an informal um, teacher or somebody who really kind of helped you discover what you wanted to do and how, how did that happen? Um, definitely, uh, like I mentioned in college, like a lot of my teachers were, you know, really just, uh, like invested in us and, you know, um, just kind of would give us ideas on what, you know, career path we could take because there is a lot of options like coming out of school in architecture and construction. Um, and yeah, so a couple of my teachers, like I just really looked up to them and, you know, where they were at in their careers. And um, I was inspired by them and they were very willing to help um, and, be there for me in that kind of informal mentor relationship. So what made you decide to be a mentor for this program? Um, I was excited to be able to share my experience because I really enjoyed college and for, for a while, like, in high school, I was just kind of an average student. So I didn't really see uh, post-secondary education as something that was for me. I just thought, oh, like the work would just get harder and I would, you know, fall even further behind. So I didn't realize that, you know, when you find something that you are interested in and passionate about, like it's so easy to learn and it's just really enjoyable. So I wanted to be able to 
share that with other young people who might, you know, be in the same boat as I was, where you are, you know, not sure if post-secondary school is for you, but I think, you know, it's for everyone. And yeah, like when you find the thing you're interested in, then it just is very easy and fun. So I wanted to be able to share that with other younger people. Yeah, I, I liked how you said earlier, I think you mentioned that you didn't know a lot of the options available. And that's what we're trying to do through this program is to help First Nations youth see more options um, because they maybe didn't consider a career in the STEM fields like science, technology, engineering, or math. Um, and there's so many and they're really rewarding and they're very, um, you know, for, for the most part, it can be pretty easy to find a job um, afterwards as well in some of these careers and, and the trades especially. Um, so I guess my next question for you, just to kind of follow up on that would be, uh, what advice would you give another First Nations youth who was in high school and maybe not sure either if they wanted to go to post-secondary or if they wanted to do a technical career um, kind of what would you tell them, I guess? Um, I guess I would tell them, you know, there is so many options, like more than it might even seem. So, you know, whatever you have, you know, a bit of interest in, I would just try to dive deep into that and, you know, figure out what your, what you're best at, what your skills are, and, you know, what, kind of career path is best suited for that um you know like for the technical fields it might seem like a little daunting like you know engineering it might seem like it's very you know math and science and physics based which that was something for me like I didn't think maybe I was capable or that was my strength but you know in architecture like it's just as much of the technical skills as it is being creative and, you know, just an interest in your community and working together as a team. So there's just like, there's, it seems like there's, you know, some type of path in the technical field for any skill that you might have, like be the best at. So, um, yeah, I would just look into your options because there are so many. Definitely. And I liked how you said too about being creative um, and how you're very artistic. Um, is that something that you feel like you're able to incorporate into your job kind of on a daily basis? Like it's not just strictly technical, like you can do those creative things as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, you it's kind of a balance between uh, aesthetic and uh, functionality. So it's interesting. Sometimes maybe maybe I'm like more creative than um, you know skills, technical skills. But just um, in school, you know, I learned like how to balance that, and then now I get to use my creativity and my knowledge, um, and. Yeah, yeah, I definitely use my creativity a lot. I know this might be a bit of a harder question to answer, but like, what are your ultimate goals? Like, where do you see yourself in five or 10 years um, having this, this kind of career in this background? Um, that is a tough question. Um, like I said, there is like a lot of options like coming out of school and then in five years. Um, I do enjoy, uh, you know, I'm working in a small office right now and I'm like starting to do like some side jobs. So I do enjoy that, like working on my own and um, yeah, maybe just, you know, still getting experience um, and maybe like starting my own business and hiring other people who I could, you know, work with and could teach them and, you know, share my experience when I get it. That sounds really cool. Um, are you, 
is there, I guess like my question would be, is there any way that you can kind of like, um, so for example, the last person I was talking to, he mentioned that his indigenous kind of culture and values are a part of what he's doing in terms of his research right now for his school. Um, were you able to tie that in at all, like your indigenous culture into either your schooling or maybe even your job that you're doing now? Um, maybe not so much in my current job, but definitely in school. Um, you know, for research projects I did, um, I was interested in like, you know, other Canadian Indigenous architects and their projects and, you know, how they're shaping the built environment while, you know, uh, still thinking about um, like the land and the people. Um, and I know, uh there's a lot of uh need for more um like people in the technical field to be able to um I'm not sure where I was going kind of like <laughs> fill that gap right like I feel like I think I know where you're going like we need we need more indigenous people to go into those technical fields so that there's a more like diverse range of voices that are being that are contributing to kind of like the, sh the shape the face of what these careers look like yes yeah 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 i totally agree with you there um i think that's a really good point because um you know a lot of times first nations youth um either kind of just fall into a job after high school or they do something that they're kind of told from their guidance counselor without exploring all of their options. But um, I think our voices are valid and they deserve to be heard in all of these different careers. Um, so I think that's pretty interesting. Um, do you have, I guess, like, I think that's pretty much all the questions I have um did you have anything you wanted to add or any updates for us because I know we've been following along with you now for almost two years in your education journey and your career so we're really proud to see where you are and um we're just uh interested in getting any updates from you and uh on how things are going um thank you uh yeah things are going great um yeah, it's been like a year now that I've graduated and been working full time. And I'm really starting to get more comfortable, um, you know, using all my skills I learned in school. Um, and, you know, I kind of miss being in school because it was like such a great experience. It was really fun. Um, and I might go back, you know, that might be something I consider too. But yeah, I'm enjoying working and then starting to do, you know, side projects and I'm still learning. I'm still, you know, researching things and on my own time, like looking into stuff because yeah, it's just still, I'm still very passionate about it. Yeah, I was gonna ask you actually, I think that one of our other um, award recipients from last year, her name is Bodana Innes. She mentioned that She's doing her master's of architecture. I believe it's at Laurentian, but she mentioned how um, when she graduates and I, th I think she has to maybe pass a test and then she'll be one of like the 20 indigenous architects in Canada. Is that kind of something on your career path or on your, on your radar? That is on my radar. That is something to consider because I did enjoy school um, and it would be you know, cool to be on that list because there is like very few Indigenous architects in Canada. So yeah, I, I am considering that. That's exciting. How do you find that list? Because I did search it on Google and I don't know if there's some sort of database that I need to be a part of and I, I couldn't find it. So <laughs> I know I've, I've seen it. I've seen the list and I think when I saw it, it was only maybe 15 or less. So yeah, 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 I think I think she was graduating this either this year or last year she was actually it might be this year she's graduating so maybe the list has kind of gone up to 20 but 
that, that doesn't sound like a lot across Canada. That's, that's not a lot. Yeah. yeah. Who, I guess my question, next question would be, who is your biggest role model or, or just like kind of, you know, in the indigenous architecture world, do you have somebody whose design style you really like, or you really look up to who stands out? Um, there is someone, I can't remember his name right now. Is it but Douglas I, Cardinal? What was that? Douglas Cardinal? Mm, I think he designed the, uh, he designed a building in Ottawa. I think it's a museum. Okay, I, yeah, that might be it. Yeah. Yeah, because I did some research on like some of his projects and yeah, I really like, you know, his design style and the way he kind of incorporates, you know, um, indigenous culture and, uh, you know, nature and everything. Like I, yeah, I think that's him. Yeah, I think so. Cause we were just doing some research on him. We're going to be featuring some different indigenous, um, like technical um, innovators throughout history on our Facebook pages throughout the month of June for Indigenous History Month. So we were, I was researching some of his projects and they are, he's amazing. He's, he's just like so cool. And his designs are like, I, I like them because they're so different. I feel like nobody's doing things like that. And his, his um, aesthetic is instantly recognizable. So to me, I'm like, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> you could do the same thing. Yeah. You could carve out your own niche design aesthetic. And yeah, maybe you're, maybe you could be the next Douglas Cardinal. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, thank you again, Emily, for taking the time out. I know it's a busy time right now. So I really appreciate um, you taking the time to talk with me and we will definitely be in touch very soon. Okay. Thank you for having me. Have a great day. Thanks you too. Okay. Bye.